please. Thank you very much Simon, for inviting me. I'm very happy and honored to speak uh, here. Uh, so I chose to talk about tiling billiards and Novikov's problem. And on, I called the talk from dynamics to topology. I will speak about uh, some class of dynamical systems that uh, uh, happen to be related to uh, some classical uh, topology problem from the 80s. And I will uh, remind you of both of them, uh, present one of them, tiling billiards, since they are quite new, and remind you of, um, of Novikov's problem uh, in topology. So uh, let me uh, state the main uh, law for this uh, one hour. Uh, it's a refraction law uh, with a quite eccentric refraction coefficient, uh, which is minus one. So the inspiration is uh, uh, Snell's law uh, of refraction. Uh, it's called Snell's law in all languages, except for French, in which it's Snell Descartes law. Um, and it um, uh, tells you how the light moves from one homogeneous media to another when it uh, crosses a boundary between two media, for example, air and water, what happens with the uh, with, uh, light rays. And um, the ratio of sinuses uh, of two angles in the picture is equal to the inverse ratio of uh, uh, refraction indices, which are um, indices of uh, this homogeneous material. Uh, and today uh, we will think that this uh, ratio is equal to minus one. And this will be the law for today. So now instead of just looking at two uh, materials which are separated by some, some boundary, we will think about a tiling in which, each, in, in which we move, the light moves if you want. And each time one crosses a boundary between two tiles, the refraction law applies. So this is a setting. Uh, and uh, this uh, system and the study of the system, the subject is called tiling billiards. Uh, and as we will see, the dynamics depends a lot on the tiling itself and the, on the geometry of the tiling. Uh, and uh, I will show you several examples of what happens. So this is a general setting. So please ask me questions uh, or speed me up if I'm going too slow as well. This never happened on mathematical seminars, but I still invite you to do it. <laughs> um, so um, these are two examples from uh, a paper by physicists uh, um, where they show the trajectories of tiling billiards on two tilings, uh, on a square tiling and on a equilateral triangle tiling. So in red, you see the trajectories. So on the left, uh, you see that there is, uh, for example, a four periodic trajectory here. Uh, and there is a drift periodic, I call it two drift periodic trajectory. So it's not uh, closed, but it has a symmetry, a, a shift symmetry of order two. And you can also have uh, periodic trajectories going in vertical directions, and that's all you can have. There are only uh, two possibilities. Either we go to infinity in a straight vertical line or in a straight horizontal line, or uh, the trajectory is periodic of period four. Uh, for equilateral triangle tiling, in some sense, it's even simpler. Uh, all trajectories, all non-singular trajectories are six periodic. Uh, so in both of these dynamical systems, all bounded trajectories are closed. So it's, uh, uh, I'll write this property down because it's rare for dynamical systems to have this uh, uh, property. So here we have simple closed curves as trajectories. Uh, it, the system may make you think about uh, very highly integrable dynamics as dynamics of um, a two-body problem where all bounded trajectories are ellipses, uh, the trajectories of planets around the sun when the sun is in one of the um, for side of the ellipse or a harmonic oscillator where all the trajectories are also ellipses, but in this case, the attractional um, center is in the center of the ellipse. Um, so these are two examples. Uh, the, both tilings are very symmetric. So one can think that uh, the abundance of uh, bounded trajectories comes from the fact that uh, there are many, many symmetries in the tilings. As we will see, it's not, True, it's not exactly true. 
um, we will see that if we perturb these two tilings uh, in uh, uh, some families, uh, this property of the fact that the all bounded trajectories are periodic, it will stay true. So uh, let me show you um, two tilings, two classes of tilings that I would like to discuss today. Uh, the one is a periodic triangle tiling. Uh, so we take any triangle and uh, uh, we take uh, a symmetric triangle, a symmetric triangle to it, uh, and we tile with this fundamental domain, we can tile all the plane. So it's the tiling by, uh, uh, by what uh, three equidistant, three families of equidistant parallel lines uh, cut out on the plane. So this uh, tiling, it has uh, the parameters. What are the parameters? There are the angles of the triangle. Of course, if you scale um, the triangle, the dynamics won't change. The dynamics of our uh, billiard won't change. And of course, uh, we have uh, initial conditions which are defined by where you put uh, a billiard ball and what is the initial direction of the trajectory. I remind you that the refraction law is for today, for always uh, the refraction, Snell Descartes uh, refraction law with a coefficient uh, equal to minus one. Uh, and another tiling that we will look at uh, is a tiling, a periodic quadrilateral tiling. So any, uh, any quadrilateral, even a non-convex quadrilateral, let's say this one, tiles a plane in the same way triangle tiles a plane. So you just take a symmetries with respect to the middles of the sides. For example, if I take this uh, side, I can draw uh, a symmetric quadrilateral uh, with some success or not. So there will be some uh, parallel uh, sides and this fundamental domain tiles a plane as well. So you see that there are more parameters in the system. Uh, but today we will look uh, at the subclass of uh, periodic quadrilateral tilings. Uh, we will look at cyclic quadrilaterals, those that are inscribed in circles. Of course, nothing uh, and nobody would uh, uh, prevent you from studying tiling billiards in other um, periodic quadrilateral tilings, like in parallelogram tiling, for example. But I have no idea what happens uh, for these uh, systems, even for parallelograms. So I won't discuss it, but I think it's a very interesting question. So I will speak about uh, cyclic quadrilaterals, um, and we will see that the properties of uh, triangle periodic tilings and uh, cyclic quadrilateral tilings are quite close uh, for the dynamics we study. And so for cyclic quadrilateral tilings, you see that the number of parameters is much smaller. We also have four angles of our quadrilateral, which has the parameters. But uh, of course, uh, this is not a good way to define because uh, we have many uh, cyclic quadrilaterals with the same parameters. They don't define it, for example, uh, pi over two, pi over two, pi over two, and pi over two, the so all 90 degrees angles define uh, one parametric family of cyclic quadrilaterals, so all rectangles. So it's better to look at, um, at the length of the sides. So here we will uh, use uh, four parameters, which are, which are the lengths of the sides of the cyclic, cyclic quadrilateral, which define it um, up, to, up to the scaling. So this is a setting. So I would like to speak about the dynamics of these two systems. Um, the reason I have chosen these two systems, uh, there are two reasons. The first, I know the most about these two systems. And the second, generally in the community, we don't know much more. So the only three cases which are more or less understood the, of the dynamics of tiling billiards are um, the tilings I mentioned, triangle periodic tiling, uh, tiling, cyclic quadrilateral tiling, and there is another paper by Diana Davis and Pat Hooper uh, on the dynamics of the trihexagonal tiling. So the tiling uh, made by hexagons and equilateral tri triangles. Uh, and you see, uh, on the right, you see three typical trajectories for these uh, three types of tilings. So for the trihexagonal tiling, uh, there is a density behavior, there is a 
the typical trajectory will feel uh, densely um, all this all the plane uh, except for a um, countable number of triangles pointing down uh, as you already see in the for the first steps of the trajectory so the trajectory is in black in the first uh, picture and for tiling uh, billiards and triangle tilings and cyclic uh, quadrilateral tilings you see that the behavior uh, typical behavior is much much different we don't see any density um, and as I said, um, no, as I didn't yet say, but as we will see very soon, uh, all bounded trajectories will be also periodic. So these are the three uh, families that we understand uh, as a community. And that's why I also want to speak about the system. I think it's uh, uh, a worthwhile pursuit uh, to look at dynamical, um, at styling billiards. First, because they give uh, beautiful pictures. For example, for a triangle and cyclic quadrilateral tilings, you see that they are beautiful in the sense uh, that they are um, um, complicated enough and not too messy. So there is uh, some interesting combinatorics uh, going on. Uh, and the second uh, reason uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, is, um, the fact that uh, tiling billiards and triangle and cyclic quadrilateral tilings are related to uh, different classical uh, objects and structures. Uh, and actually, if you worked with Arnaud Rosy maps and their real deformations, triangle tiling billiards and periodic triangle tilings are the same as uh, Arnaud Rosy maps and uh, their real deformations. It's just a translation of the same objects. Uh, and uh, there is not, not really much difference, but we understood it only uh, two years ago. So uh, you see, for example, on the picture uh, on the left, uh, it's a picture from the first paper on triangle tiling billiards and one of the first papers at all on tiling billiards. Um, uh, you see the trajectories in some very precise uh, triangle uh, tiling uh, the trajectories uh, which are periodic and which grow. Uh, and these are actually the, the first 12 uh, periodic trajectories. If you arrange them by size, there is nothing else that can happen. And you see that uh, each fourth trajectory is made from the pieces of the first three. So there is this um, autosimilarity property, which uh, also Rosie Fractal has. And actually in a very precise sense, you can prove the conversion trajectories to uh, some, after a scaling to some fractal curves studied, for example, by Hooper and Weiss or by Macmillan uh, in relation to the symbolic dynamics of the Arnaud Rosy maps, of more precisely of one uh, uh, map from this family, which is Arnaud Yuko's map in some sense, the most, the most autosimilar map in the family. So this is one uh, direction. This is that uh, tiling billiards are related to this uh, classical objects as um, um, interval exchange transformations uh, of six intervals and so some um, translation surfaces of genus three. Uh, but there is also another uh, connection uh, about which I want to talk today. It's a connection with topology and with Novikov's problem, uh, which studies um, the form of the sections, of plain sections of three periodic surfaces in, uh, in Euclidean space. Uh, and I will explain this connection. Uh, the explanation is very elementary. It's based only on some geometric constructions and uh, I wanted to share it with you. Uh, so uh, let's look at the, so please ask me questions. So this was an introduction and motivation of, um, uh, of the system. There's one question in the chat, maybe I'll just mention it. Somebody asked from a previous slide, uh, what is blocks here uh, that appear, it was mentioned in uh, maybe the third slide, yes. Yes, okay. So this is uh, related to the study of um, movement of light uh, in um, metamaterials with, uh, uh, with coefficients of refraction um, um, negative re refraction coefficients. And when we look at uh, this physical explanation, 
um, the refraction coefficient depends on the frequency of uh, and the um, uh, on the frequency of light. So this tiling billiard is, in some sense, for physicists, it's only the resonant uh, case of the movement, because if we change the, uh, the, um, the uh, wavelength, the, the, the behavior will change. And Bloch's theorem uh, is the theorem that explains how the light will um, this go uh, through through a um, through a material which is made from the many many pieces of uh, different homogeneous materials, and here uh, Mascarenhas and Flugel speak about breakdown of Bloch's theorem because there is no uh, propagation of light because of this uh, very very special resonances. So does that mean I guess that the coefficient of refraction would kind of change from negative one to an irrational number? Is that or some more, that, that's the, the, the case which Bloch's theorem refers to. Yeah, Bloch's theorem, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it depends on the, yeah, exactly. It depends on what, uh, what refraction coefficient is, but it's true that uh, this periodic law happens only for k equal minus one because the, the Descartes law, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, it's the relation of sinuses and not of the angles themselves. So this uh, resonance hope only happens for minus one. I have just a follow-up question, if I could. This, this talk is devoted to k equals minus one. If you deform away from that, how do, do these tilings naturally deform? Is there a one parameter family of tilings that correlate to changing k? Uh, so uh, the quick answer is I don't understand what happens when k is not equal to minus one. Uh, it's very interesting to maybe hope uh, that if k is close to minus one, uh, uh, the dynamics will be close to the dynamics we see, but I don't think that it's what happens because k mi equals minus one, we will see that it's, it gives lots of stability, lots of topological stability, and when we break down this law, everything breaks. But what I think may be more interesting or maybe more um, hopeful is to change the tiling so that to stay with the low k equal minus one, change the tiling and, uh, for example, try to understand the parallelogram tiling uh, based on the tiling by um, cyclic quadrilaterals which approach parallelograms, even if there are not many, but something like that. Uh, maybe, maybe in some way it's a very uh, uh, general comparison and maybe there is no uh, hope for that, but to look at these systems as what two-body problem or like kind of stability is uh, for three-body problem. Maybe there is some kind of KM theory if you want for telling billiards, but it's very, very uh, far going comparison. So I don't know yep. if it's, I, I have no idea what happens uh, if K is not equal to minus one. The only paper that I uh, saw existing on this, it's a uh, Glenn Dinning's pa paper. What he does, he studies the um, movement of um, tiling billiards and square tilings but the coefficients are not one and minus one, uh, the refraction indices, but any numbers, n and m. And he describes the dynamics um, of using some interval exchange transformations and the dynamics is in fact dissipative. And uh, he studies how the trajectories go to infinity at what scale, depending on the relationship between n and m. But this is the only case I know studied uh, uh, Thank in you. relation to Okay, so uh, now uh, let us uh, look at one trajectory just to have uh, one uh, example uh, in mind. So this is the system I will discuss for now. I will go back to, I will upgrade to quadrilaterals a little bit forward in the talk, but for now let's look at the triangle tiling billiard. So this is one trajectory. As you have seen, uh, the refraction coefficient uh, is minus one. And we want to understand the dynamics depending on the form of a tile and initial conditions. So uh, here are three examples of trajectories, uh, just to show you what can happen. Uh, I used the program Next Now, which you can find online. Um, and you see that, for example, there is a six periodic trajectory, which uh, uh, looks like a trajectory on an equilateral uh, triangle tiling, but the triangle here is very far from being uh, equilateral, it's obtuse. 
but you still have the six periodic trajectories. There is this kind of stability. Uh, this is another trajectory with quite a large period, also periodic. And you see it's also a simple closed curve. And here you see another um, type of trajectory that you can find. It's uh, linearly skipping. I call it linearly skipping. It, it means that the trajectory uh, is living inside uh, some band and uh, in, can be parametrized uh, uh, by a line uh, up to some small, um, small um, uh, mistake. So this is, uh, it has some strong uh, direction, linear direction. So these are the examples and one can prove that actually this is what happens generically. But uh, let me first state the maybe surprising uh, example, uh, surprising uh, um, result, which is in the base of all the study, this integrability property of triangle tiling billiards. Um, so Bert Smith, Davis, from and Ayer proved that what we have seen on these examples is true, is that the fact that uh, in triangle tiling billiards, you have Mm, you don't have any spiraling behavior. You don't pass by any tile more than once. So there is lots of uh, simplicity in some sense um, in these curves. So to state it more precisely, so for a, uh, for a triangle tiling billiard and for any trajectory in the styling, first the oriented distance uh, the circumcenter so the center of the circumcircle of a tile that I um, will denote tau of gamma is uh, constant, is an invariant of a trajectory. It's constant along a trajectory. So what I mean is that if you look at a trajectory at its segment in some tile, it uh, crosses and you measure distance to the circumcenter, you will obtain some positive or negative number. Uh, and this number is the same in every um, tile as the trajectory crosses. So for example, if a trajectory passed by a circumcenter of one tile, it will pass by circumcenters of all the tiles it crosses. And from this, uh, all the other statements follow. So every trajectory uh, passes uh, by uh, every tile at most once. Uh, all uh, bounded trajectories are close, are periodic, closed curves, uh, and they are also stable, meaning that their perturbations uh, will follow the same uh, symbolic dynamics in the tiling uh, uh, and perturbation in the sense of changing the initial conditions, but also changing a little bit the form of a triangle. Uh, so this is the first statement. I will explain its proof. It's very simple uh, and beautiful and can be generalized to other tilings. But the form of the tiling, as you will see, will, is very important. The statement is radically not true for, for example, parallelogram tiling. And another theorem uh, is a theorem that describes uh, generic behavior. So you see that from theorem one, we already see that uh, a trajectory can be either periodic, either has to, to infinity, it has no choice because it passes by every tile and a tile at most one. And uh, with Ms. Pascal, we have proven that for almost any tile, for almost any form of a triangle, so a form is defined by the angles, uh, all the trajectories on the corresponding tiling are either uh, periodic or linearly skipping. So the trajectories I have showed you on the previous slide are typical. But uh, it happens, some, uh, something else also happens. Uh, trajectories may escape in a non-linear fashion. And this uh, fashion can be quite complicated and we actually don't understand it uh, completely even today. Uh, but they can do it only in uh, if first they have to pass by the circumcenters of the tiles. And second, 
uh, the, the forms of the triangles, alpha, beta, gamma, have to belong to some very precise set of measure zero. And actually, Hausdorff dimension smaller than two. And you can be much more precise in Hausdorff dimension. And uh, not to be uh, mysterious, the set is exactly the rosy gasket. It's a fractal set of some very precise um, um, continued fraction algorithm, which is actually drawn on this picture. Everything which is not in, in red and blue and in green is, is a rosy gasket. And if you take, uh, so this is a set of parameters of triangles, alpha, beta, gamma. So if you take any point uh, in the rosy gasket, um, I may define you if you want me to, please tell me if you want me to define the rosy gasket. Uh, so there is some very precise algorithm which defines a set, which is uh, an invariant uh, gasket uh, of this algorithm. Uh, if you take any uh, point in the set, it will define you a triangle. Uh, an acute triangle, and the trajectory is passed by the circumcenters of this uh, acute triangles and the tiling have a good chance to uh, escape to infinity in a nonlinear fashion. Uh, actually, they, with respect to a measure on the rosy gasket, they almost always do so. And uh, the picture here is a very, very long periodic trajectory, but it approaches. Uh, a non-linearly uh, escaping trajectory, uh, which goes to infinity in the triangle tiling billiard. So the generic behavior triangle tiling billiards is either complete, uh, either the trajectory is periodic, either it escapes to infinity in a linear fashion, but very, very, very specific trajectories, those that pass by circumcenters of triangles, can escape uh, to infinity in a nonlinear fashion. But for this, you have to choose a triangle very, very precisely. So this is a statement of, of the behavior. Uh, as we will see in, in the future, uh, for cyclic quadrilateral tilings, the behavior of, of theorem one is exactly the same. You just can rewrite it. Uh, the behavior of theorem two is qualitatively, qualitatively the same. So the first part is true. Uh, the trajectories will be either periodic linearly escaping for almost any form of a tile, and there will be a set of zero measure um, of tiles for which you can um, expect uh, a nonlinear uh, escape. So and a, a question? Um, yes. So in, in the nonlinear escape, is it fair to say that your distance at least square root of n from the origin after uh, distance n? Uh, yes, but almost always yes, but not not completely always. So uh, indeed, yes. The 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 reason is that uh, uh, one of the reasons, one of the explanations is that the trajectories, the periodic trajectories that approach uh, uh, the escaping trajectories, they have to pass by all the tiles uh, mm -hmm. uh, inside. So uh, their length is more or less. Uh, uh, defining the, the measure of the set they, they cover. Yeah. Uh, but some trajectories can ex escape in a very, very complicated way. So the, the, um, the dynamics here is related to the ergodicity properties of interval exchange transformations, for example, here of Arnaud Rosy. And you can have some uh, maps which are not weakly mixing. And there will be some trajectories which are kind of spiraling away to infinity and growing some kind of hands in different directions in mm -hmm. some um, different times. So these trajectories won't have this property. But if you take uh, some trajectory by chance, you can very well expect what, what you said. But the ones that grow hands, um, it seems like maybe they escape faster than square root of n. Is that right? Yes. They don't, yeah. yeah, so everything goes at least square root of n. Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, great, yeah, thank exactly. you, very yeah. interesting. Yeah, and this, uh, uh, so this uh, hands work, uh, it's a very new result by Melody Andrieux. Uh, I think she will publish her thesis soon. And uh, this growing hands <laughs> example uh, is uh, done by her in the terms of um, the symbolic dynamics of Arnaud Rosy words. So maybe just to quickly follow up on that. So do you get every exponent possible between a half and one with these growing hands in terms of the behavior in time? 
Okay, I don't know. I think uh, we don't understand very well what happens. In order to uh, do this estimate, you have uh, to... There, there are different examples of different kinds, uh, di giving some non-unuclear gordic examples, some non-weekly mixing examples, but it's always related to study of some series. And I think it's a work in itself for each of the examples. So I don't think we have a very clear understanding. Um, almost all of the maps in this family are uniquely ergonomic. Almost all of them, in some other sense, are, are weakly mixing. Uh, but we don't understand what are the intersections and relations. The works I can refer to is uh, works of Cassaigne, Ferranzi, uh, Hubert, and like uh, maybe some other people. But since I'm working in Marseille, I mostly heard of this results, Marseille results. Um, Thank you. Um, okay, so this is um, a statement for triangles. Um, so I just wanted to show you uh, one example of chaotic behavior. Uh, I'm a little bit repeating what I said before, but uh, uh, this is an explicit example. So you just have to take uh, three angles of your triangles, of your triangle, uh, and cook them up. Uh, using the Fibonacci uh, number, an algebraic number of degree three, such that x plus x squared plus x cubed is equal to one. You take the angles of the triangle uh, as follows. And on this tiling, you construct a tiling, a triangle uh, tiling uh, with these angles. And you will see that on this tiling, uh, a trajectory will escape to infinity only if it passes through a circumcentral of a tile. And it will escape to infinity for sure in a nonlinear way. And almost always, uh, it will pass through all the tiles uh, of, uh, of the styling. And uh, you can even understand much more precisely what happens with the combinatorics of the trajectories uh, and uh, classify the periods of possible periodic trajectories of the styling. And they will be doubles of Fibonacci numbers. So ignore these ones, even they have some very precise sense here. Uh, so you have a trajectory of period 6, 10, etc. So this is 6, this is 10, this is 18, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is uh, something to 400, 4,418, 4, 4, 418, or something like that. Uh, and the symbolic dynamics of this trajectory is also uniquely defined. Um, to understand it, you need to find some renormalization for this uh, dynamics. It's, it's, a, uh, it's the same renormalization as the renormalization which was found by uh, Pierre Arnoux, Arnoux Yukos, and uh, Rosie. So if you have a trajectory of some uh, precise uh, period, you will have a unique word in uh, the letters A, B, and C, which defines how it uh, wiggles around the tiling. For example, for six periodic trajectory, you have A, B, C, A, B, C is a symbolic word. Those of you who have worked with uh, Rosie Fractal may recognize an A, B, C, A, B, C, one, two, three, which is the beginning of the iteration of the Rosy substitution in some sense. So uh, this is a, an example of a chaotic behavior. So I formulated for you what we know about triangle telling billiards. Now I want to uh, go a little bit back in some sense to show you some ideas, uh, which are geometric ideas uh, that study uh, telling billiards. There are three ideas which all of them are very elementary, but I think all of them are important because they connect styling billiards to different uh, wor mathematical worlds or subworlds, if you want. So the first one is a folding idea, uh, which was uh, found by Bert Smith, uh, Diana Davis, uh, Elijah Fromm, and uh, Simon Ayer. Um, and this idea connects triangle tiling billiards with interval exchange transformations on the circle. So it's connects tiling billiards in some classes uh, of uh, tilings. And we will see, I hope that it's much more general than only triangle tilings. Uh, it connects with interval exchange transformations with flips, changing orientation. So with one dimensional dynamics. The second idea is to extend the folding idea in order to find the foliations of the plane, which correspond to the dynamics. Uh, such that their leaves will be uh, tiling billiard trajectories. And the third idea is a connection of tiling billiards with a 
uh, topology in three-dimensional space. Uh, uh, it, uh, it will connect uh, it in the following ways. The tiling billiard trajectories will uh, appear as sections, as plain sections of surfaces uh, in Euclidean space, and the surfaces will have uh, three periodicity. So how all of these three ideas go? So the first one, uh, I, the first idea uh, works like that. So if you take a tiling uh, billiard trajectory, you just fold along a trajectory. And uh, of course, uh, the segments fold one on another, just because uh, that's why, uh, that's how we define the dynamics. So it's a very uh, clear idea. Anybody who had observed uh, Butterflies uh, noticed it. Uh, Nabokov he also noticed it and was very precise about this uh, feeling, as as he is about anything. So he says, "I like to fold my magic carpet after use in such a way as to superimpose one part of the pattern upon another." So of course he he noticed it uh, when you fold the the butterfly's wings. Uh, in a butterfly, you have a triangles which are just symmetric one with respect to another, uh, with respect to uh, some line. Uh, in our case, we don't have a line because we have a central symmetry, so the triangles won't uh, uh, fold one and another. But when you do a folding, uh, what will happen? The triangle uh, will fold something like this. So you see that these four points have to belong to the same circle. <laughs> this is not a very good picture. Uh, you will have uh, uh, your points will live on the same circle, and it will happen for all uh, the points when you fold along the trajectory. So this folding along the trajectory is an idea which uh, which is present when you study any tiling billiard. But what is uh, quite amazing for the um, tiling billiard uh, in a triangle uh, tilings is that it, this folding can be done globally in the sense that you can just cut out the plane, uh, tiled by triangles, and define a map, which maps all this plane to some origami in such a way that two uh, triangles which were neighboring are folded as uh, butterfly swings. Uh, and uh, the proof of this fact uh, is quite easy. You just have to prove it locally and then extend along the paths. So why, if I fold along uh, around a vertex, uh, a triangle will fold on the good place. Uh, so uh, in origami, the, the, this idea is called Kawasaki's theorem, is that if you have a vertex and you have an even number of uh, sectors of, let's say, of polygons uh, that meet uh, in this vertex in such a way that the sum of um, orange angles is equal to the sum of uh, Mm, white angles. Then when you fold uh, your pattern, uh, the initial um, tile will fold on itself. It's just related to the fact that the angle is added up when you fold in one direction and it's um, subtracted when it's folded in another direction. So, and this property holds, of course, for uh, for triangle periodic triangle tilings, and it also holds for cyclic uh, quadrilateral tilings. And you see that uh, for the tilings by quadrilaterals, it's actually the only way it can be so because when you mm, draw a pattern here, uh, the sum of these two angles is equal to the sum of two other angles. Uh, this property, this property of local foldability, is equivalent to the fact that uh, the opposite angles sum up to pi, so the quadrilateral has to be cyclic. So uh, here we start to feel why uh, cyclic quadrilaterals um, are needed uh, to have this integrability of the dynamics, because the folding is present only for cyclic quadrilaterals. So okay, we see how uh, the tiling is folded globally. What does it mean? Uh, it helps us prove uh, the first theorem of integrability of Bert Smith, Davis, Fromm, and Ayer. Why? Because now when you look at a trajectory which goes through a tiling uh, and you want to prove this uh, stability properties, uh, what is sufficient to do is look on a folding. And what happens on a folding? On a folding, on this uh, small picture, you have all the vertices 
uh, are lying on the same circle. And the circle, it's, it's a circle in which all the circum circles of the tiles on the, on the plane fold. And so you have the only circle. The trajectory now here is just a line, or it's, it's not a line, but it's, it's uh, going back and forth on some chord on the circle. And uh, now uh, to understand where the trajectory passes in some tile of the plane, you just have to see where it goes through a tile in a folding. And uh, you just need to look at the intersection of a chord in a circle with some fixed triangle, and it's only one, one segment. So that's how all the stability properties are proved. And the integral of motion, the distance through the circum uh, to the circumcenter is also obvious from the folding. So the folding gives you uh, this integrability, the stability properties, the fact that all bounded trajectories are close and stable. And it also gives the relationship uh, to interval exchange transformations with flips. Why? Because um, now instead of looking on the, how the trajectory goes uh, around the triangle tiling, you can look how it moves on a circle. And now uh, what is the dynamics on the circle? Uh, you have a triangle here, for example, you have a trajectory with, which is going to some uh, side of a triangle. And the next iteration, it, you have to replace a triangle with another triangle, which is a folded one, and change the direction of a trajectory. Next time you will see another uh, side and you will have to draw another triangle, which uh, is living on the same chord and change the direction one more time. So after two iterations, the, tra the trajectory the direction of the chord is the same and the chord doesn't change. So you see that there is a um, map on the, on the circle uh, and the coordinate on the circle is the coordinate of the triangle, how it moves uh, and it preserves the distances locally, uh, except for the points where uh, there is a discontinuity and it's an interval exchange transformation, uh, but there is a, uh, it doesn't preserve orientation. And more precisely, the family that uh, is studied is actually you take three intervals of different lengths, which are actually proportional to the angles of the triangle. You flip every one of them and you push them by tau and tau being exactly the distance to the circumcenter. Sorry, the tau being one half minus the distance to the circumcenter. So if the trajectory passes by the circumcenter, tau is equal to one half. Uh, and for those who worked with Arnaud Rosy family, uh, when tau equals to one half, you take a square of this map, you obtain exactly the Arnaud Rosy family if your triangle is acute. And when you change tau, you have a real deformations of Arnaud Rosy uh, family. So this is uh, the folding construction. And you see, we, ha we can we have already a lot to say about uh, the dynamics just from this idea. Um, the next idea is just uh, uh, building up on this idea of uh, folding. Uh, so let me show you one more animation. So if you uh, launch three trajectories uh, in the same tile and you launch them in a parallel way, uh, they will live their lives. They will separate each time they hit, uh, there is a singularity between them. And, uh, but they will stay parallel in all the tiles as they cross together. And we are folding, which is, we, here is animated just by folding uh, along some paths, but it can be done globally. We are folding, they will fold in two, uh, in three parallel chords uh, inside your circle, inside your disk. So this is the idea for parallel foliations. You just uh, perturb your trajectory in the family by pushing it parallelly to itself, and you can cover all the, all the plane. So if you did your homework and watched the video, uh, in the abstract, uh, you seen uh, parallel foliations uh, in a movie done by Afir David. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I, I like the structure a lot because it helps to understand the, uh, the dynamics and the symbolic dynamics of any trajectory by uh, looking at the trajectories inside it. So for example, this picture uh, we discussed before, it can be seen in the same tiling. It can be seen uh, in one tiling. We can see all of them uh, in the following way. You just take a, a six periodic trajectory and you um, look at the trajectory, which is parallel to it, but a little bit out 
from the um, first trajectory, at some moment you will hit a singularity and you will obtain a next one, et cetera, et cetera. And these trajectories grow till the moment when you reach a circum center of the tail and in, in the, this particular um, the, um, point, you will have a trajectory which escapes to infinity, kind of countering all the periodic trajectories you uh, uh, constructed uh, in previous steps. So there is this uh, uh, parallel affiliation in which all the uh, symbolic dynamics are included at the same time, which is actually uh, equivalent by looking at row deformations of our families and changing the parameters, the distance between two singular points on the translation surface. Um, yeah, so this is a picture of what, of what happens if you push uh, a periodic trajectory uh, inside. You will see that there are um, uh, also periodic trajectories living inside this domain, and there are this kind of uh, flowers, I call them flowers, um, the unions of separatrices that define the symbolic dynamics of the initial trajectory. Okay, so this was the second idea about uh, um, tiling billiards, which permits to understand a little better the symbolic dynamics uh, of these tilings and, for example, to prove that uh, this family converges in some sense to the rosy fractal. So now let me uh, forget a little bit uh, tiling billiards and uh, formulate you the classical Novikov's problems. Novikov problem on plane sections of uh, surfaces. And you will see how they already seem to be connected in flavor. And then I will show to you that Novikov's problem is indeed connected to tiling billiards. So what is this is about? Um, so maybe Anton Zorich, who is here, will recognize this picture that I found only in his article. But initially, it's a picture from some physics book of Landau and Lifshitz. So these are fermissive surfaces um, of different metals. And Novikov, Sergei Novikov, he, um, in this problem, he stated it, uh, inspired by uh, problems in conductivity physics uh, of the movement of electron on the surface, on the Fermi surface of the metal in presence of some magnetic field, some, uh, some constant magnetic field. Uh, but I will formulate it in uh, purely topological terms. So we will take a function uh, on the three torus uh, and we will take a level surface of this function. So M equals to F minus well, one of some energy levels that I will call tau. Uh, so this is the surface inside the torus. Uh, and of course, you can also look at uh, how it sur this surface presents itself uh, uh, in R3. So I will call uh, it uh, M hat, the pre image of M. So M hat is a three periodic surface in R3. And the question uh, of Novikov was, what happens if we cut the surface by, by a family of parallel planes with some fixed direction? So we fix uh, H, a vector in R3, and we define a family of planes, orthogonal to this vector uh, with H some constant. And the question is, how uh, do we behave the intersections of M uh, with uh, these planes? So let me call them gamma tau H. So gamma tau H, there are unions of curves. Uh, and uh, this construction defines a foliation uh, on M that uh, for which is a of which are sections of M hat uh, under projection pi. And uh, what happens, and what uh, has uh, Ivan Dinikov show, showed, uh, that um, for this couple, a surface and a vector, there are three possible behaviors of sections. Either the behavior is trivial, uh, meaning that all the connected components are compact, uh, periodic leaves. Either the behavior is integrable, meaning that every component uh, is either, uh, is either trivial or a deformed line. Deformed line meaning linearly escaping behavior in terms of uh, tiling billets. 
or you have a chaotic behavior, meaning that the foliation that you have on M has uh, a minimal component of uh, high enough genus or genus uh, bigger or equal to three. So uh, these are three possible behaviors. Uh, and uh, Dinikov showed that actually the last one of them, the chaotic behavior is uh, very rare. So let me, uh, I will precise it a little bit, but let me just say one remark. So this is a picture from the paper by Dinikov and DeLeo, and they have taken this very precise surface M. You see that this is a genus three surface and it has some, um, two double saddles with respect to some generic uh, height. Um, and they studied the um, vectors H for which the chaotic behavior is possible for the surface. And uh, it happened that the, um, the space of vectors H for, for which the chaotic behavior is possible is nothing, nothing else than the rosy gasket. One more time. And uh, I will, uh, what I want to say is that this, uh, the study of this surface is the same as study of uh, triangle tiling billiards. So what uh, Dinikov has shown, um, so yes, I'm going very fast on Novikov's problem, but it's a, a classical problem that has been studied for 40 years and uh, uh, it started uh, with the question of Novikov, uh, Anton Zorich found the first uh, understanding of some stability in this problem. And then Ivan Dinikov has proven this uh, result in 1999, which was a breakthrough, a topological breakthrough, because he, um, by studying, by doing Morse theory, he manages to prove this uh, very important theorem. So he says that for a generic function f uh, and for every vector h, uh, one of the two cases holds for the behavior of the of the system. So the first case is that, so now we have F, so we still have uh, energy parameter to fix. So think about F minus one of tau uh, of the surfaces, which are one parametric family of surfaces. And uh, for any vector H, one of the two cases holds. The first case is the following, that, so let me, draw a segment of energy, I can suppose it's zero, one. That's for small energies, we will have trivial behavior. All the intersections will be uh, uh, periodic uh, closed curves for big uh, enough energy as well. And there will be a segment, a closed segment for which the behavior will be integrable. And the second case is then when this uh, segment becomes one point. So we have trivial behavior here are trivial behavior as well. And here we can have either integrable behavior or chaotic behavior. And moreover, the first case, this case occurs for an ever dense and open set of vectors H, almost always. So you see that there is um, a co-dimension one uh, space in which we can hope for chaotic behavior. Um, and uh, then uh, the questions which are still open is to understand um, uh, the structure of this, of this set where chaotic behavior is possible. The first conjecture, the, the weakest one, but still open in full generality, generality, generality is to say that uh, inside this um, co-dimension one um, subspace, subset, the set of couples surface uh, and vector uh, has measure zero. The set of couples a surface vector for which the behavior is chaotic has measure zero. But for physical, so this is conjecture when we can change the surface and can change the vector. But for physical applications, we want to fix a surface. Uh, and uh, if we fix F, uh, the second conjecture is that the measure of uh, the um, points H on the sphere uh, giving uh, chaotic behavior also is zero. And the third conjecture, even more complicated, is to prose that the Hausdorff dimension of that 
is uh, strictly smaller than two. Uh, and this conjecture is called novikov malisov conjecture. So uh, let me, maybe you already see the, the, the same taste of the results for telling billiards and for dynamic of uh, uh, theorem or generic behavior theorem. Uh, let me show you how uh, tiling billiards connect to Novikov's problem. So uh, if you take a tiling billiard, say, on a triangle tiling, as we have seen, we have this tiling billiard foliation. So we have any trajectory, for example, here, trajectory gamma, which does something else after. Uh, in some fixed tile, say P P0, it has first uh, this invariant energy invariant tau of gamma, which is a... Uh, uh, distance to the circumcenter of the tile, even though here it's probably somewhere there. So it looks a lot like a uh, uh, rectangle triangle. So let's say it's just here. Um, so we have tau of gamma, which is a distance, oriented distance to the circumcenter. And we can also define uh, an angle parameter, let's say tau, theta, theta of gamma is the angle uh, between the trajectory and some fixed direction, some fixed horizontal direction once and forever between the trajectory and a fixed direction. So here I have uh, chosen the direction of this, of this line. Okay, so these are the parameters. Uh, and now we know that if we change tau and we fix theta, we will have a parallel foliation of the plane. But now what we will do, we will change theta, but uh, guard tau is the same. So if I draw the, the trajectories that appear here, we will have some family of trajectories which are tangent, all tangent to some smaller circle of uh, radius tau. And uh, the idea of the construction is to draw all those trajectories, not in the same plane, but go up in one more dimension. And we will construct a surface in this way. So we take uh, all traje take trajectory gamma with fixed tau. And I also want to take not only this trajectory, but all the trajectories with the same tau and the same theta once they are full into this um, into this triangle. In other way, all the trajectories which will be cut uh, by the scissors with the same trajectory gamma, we take all of them. They uh, represent some union of curves on the, our plane. And then we will take all the trajectories with the same tau and go up in the direction theta. So we, instead of looking at, at the tiled plane, we look at the tiled plane multiplied by some uh, uh, as a line uh, R with uh, a coordinate theta. And uh, we look at the surface uh, here that I will call M hat, um, which is defined as a uh, union of tiling billiard trajectories of the same tau. And in each layer, and in layer theta equal to theta, uh, the angle of these trajectories uh, in this fixed uh, tile has to be equal to theta. So we, we move on the helicoidal stairs in each of the tiles. We obtain a surface. The surface uh, obviously has one symmetry, uh, which is a symmetry uh, theta goes to theta plus two pi just uh, by construction, because we have made a tour uh, around the circle. But what is uh, quite amazing and related to the existence of folding to the quasi-periodicity, which is present in the system, is that the surface is actually three periodic. So the surface M hat is three periodic. And uh, tiling billiard trajectories, uh, so these this pictures correspond to how theta changes from tile to tile. And this existence of folding and quasi-periodicity give us that uh, M hat is three periodic 
and styling billiard trajectories are just um, connected component of horizontal sections of the surface. And then you can deform the lattice uh, of periods of M hat to be a standard lattice Z3, and the horizontal plane will become any plane. Uh, and uh, the problem of the study of tiling billiard trajectories uh, will become Novikov's problem. I'm going a little bit fast here, but um, that's, that's the main idea. Uh, and you see that once we have this construction, uh, for any tiling for which the folding exists, we can construct a surface which uh, will get into the uh, setting of Novikov's problem. And uh, Dinikov's theorem is uh, corresponding to the theorem for tiling billiards, uh, which says that the, the only level uh, of energy uh, tau for which uh, chaotic behavior is possible uh, is uh, tau equals to, to zero. This is related to the fact that the surfaces we construct for our tiling billiards have a special symmetry. Um, they have a central symmetry, so the situation is easier than in general case. And the three conjectures here uh, for triangle tiling billiards, uh, the, they are all uh, equivalent because we don't have too many parameters. And for example, the last conjecture is translated to the fact that uh, the dimension of the uh, Rosy gasket is smaller than two, which was proven by Avila, Berz, Kripchen, coins and refined uh, for lower bounds by um, uh, Mateus and Gutierrez Homme and for um, upper bounds uh, by Fougeron following um, Balagar. So um, we kind of can say that, okay, we understand the connection of Novikov's problem for triangle uh, case. For cyclic quadrilaterals, uh, the connection is still, uh, still holds. And we managed by understanding the um, symbolic dynamics of cyclic quadrilaterals to prove the first conjecture um, for the corresponding surfaces, which are actually genus three uh, surfaces uh, with central symmetry. So it's not complete solution of uh, conjecture one, uh, for genus three surfaces, but in restriction to the central symmetry in case. And conjecture three, uh, conjecture two and conjecture three are still not completely accessible because the set we look at is um, uh, this set, which call, we will call it Novikov's gasket. But in the set, it's a subset of, um, of a octahedron. Uh, so it's more, even more, it's a subset of a three-dimensional simplex. And there is a surface and the vector are mixed inside the set. So in order to prove uh, Novikov's conjecture, we have to look at the sections uh, of the set. Uh, so this is a result uh, with Hubert uh, Mercat, the Nikov and Skripchenko. So we prove uh, Novikov's uh, conjecture in its weak form for um, sur surfaces of genus 3 with central symmetry by studying symbolic dynamics of uh, cyclic quadrilateral tilings. Mm. And here on this picture, you see the sections of this new set of this new gasket, which we call Novikov's gasket, for which we prove that uh, it has measure zero and um, house of dimension smaller than three. And uh, the goal would be to prove the, uh, to understand if um, the house of dimension of the sections is always smaller, strictly smaller than two. Um, and other questions that I have is uh, to generalize all of these things to other locally foldable tilings. Uh, I believe that it can be done, uh, or at least it's interesting because uh, the dynamics on the circle emerges also in this case. Uh, the third question is related to the stability zones in the places in the space of parameters uh, of the vectors where linear escape is uh, possible. This is more interesting. This is the sets which are interested to, interesting for physicists because it's a linear escaping behavior. It's the existence of the tor tori in our surface uh, and there is some topological stability to it. Um, and this is what physical experiments see. 
And the fourth question, much more general one, is uh, can we understand something else? Can we understand uh, tiling billiards on not only locally foldable tilings? Is there some uh, geometric setting for the study of the tilings? And can we understand typical dynamics? Is there, is, is there some dichotomy of um, ergodicity versus uh, integrability or, or something like this? So I will stop here. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry for being a little bit over time. All right, so I invite everybody thank you to thank Olga for a very nice talk. Thank uh, you. Everybody's welcome to ask questions. Maybe uh, for now you can just go ahead and ask. Olga, uh, what are those numbers that had in the previous slide? So you have 0 0.06 and then uh, 